Okay, today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. It's 2 p.m. or a little, uh, 10 <laughs> minutes after 2 uh, at the library. And I'm Chuck Lydell. And today I'm going to talk about what happened 100 years ago in 1924. Now, Paul and I, uh, I give, I've given Paul a long list of all the topics. There are so many things we could talk about. Aviation history, uh, boats, uh, you know, the whole movies. But I really uh, struggle each time to come up with something different, something that I haven't already talked about. So last week I was really struggling. So I started walking because I wanted to go to the new restaurant called Pier 24. It used to be Antonio's. Okay, so as I was coming by, I walked by the White Buffalo, which is a, you know, a, a thrift store. And my brain said, oh yeah, the, the bison came over, with the really bison, North American bison, they came over in 1924 <coughs> to make a movie. So my brain said, yeah, they came in 1924. As I'm walking to Pier 24, and they named it because the SS Catalina, the great white steamship, came over on his first voyage in 1924. As I was coming around the corner, I saw the Yacht Club. The Yacht Club has a giant sign that says 100th anniversary, 1924 to 2024. So my brain said, duh, <laughs> you're looking for a topic? Come on, I mean, I'm giving you everything you need. So I said, okay, I'm going to pick 1924. So that's what I did. So uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. Now, uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to do these in some kind of an order. And if I don't, you know, I think we can do okay. Um, the population in 1924, based on the 1920 census and they didn't have any now i'm only telling you what the census said so don't take offense it said the population was 1643 right now it's about 3900 but they didn't stop there plus 125 mexicans that's what the census said so i'm just telling you what the census said okay. um, you know, in the old days, like in the South, where my family come from, they would even talk about whites and blacks. They would say, you know, separate them. How many blacks did they have in the household? You know, slaves and whatever. You know. So they had 1643 plus 125 Mexicans. Um, the, believe it or not, this is where they had the hospital. In 1923, was right here at this location where the where the library, the courthouse, and the sheriff's department is. It was the home of, Joseph, of a Judge Joseph Banning, who had the Banning three brothers, Hancock, William, and Joseph, owned the island before Mr. Wrigley took it over in 1919. So when they left, they took over one of the brothers' homes and turned that into a hospital. So I wasn't kidding from you. I said I could very well have been born underneath this table because uh, I don't know exactly it, what, where the... It wasn't that table. <laughs> that table's not 100 years old. Now, we did have a theater there. Uh, it's right next to um, Abe's Liquor Store on the main level. It was called The Strand. It had 600 seats, and if you go in there now, you're going to be able to see where the projector was. It was up on a higher level, so of course they were showing uh, all silent films, black and white silent films in those days. Now, I mentioned the fact that the bison, the North American bison, were brought over here in 1920. This is all 1924. I shouldn't keep repeating myself. Um, they were brought over to make a movie. Uh, they brought over 16 head of bison, and uh, they now have just gone, you know, gone crazy. But the conservancy is in charge of them, so they made a movie called *The Thundering Herd*. Now, throughout the history, this was written by Zane Gray, who had his home up in the hill. 
this angry Pueblo. That's where the writer's angry was. And uh, like the a lot of people over the years uh, have said the name of the movie yeah. was The Vanishing yeah, America. And, look, and I did the research. It was not The Vanishing America because they always said there's no bison in that movie. Of course there's not because it has nothing to do with them. They were talking about the Native Americans in The Vanishing America. The thundering herd is what they used to refer to as a bison when they had millions of them out in the um, in Great the middle plans. of the, the prairie, whatever, and they would sound like thunder when they would run. So these are the movies that came out that year. Captain Blood. You probably don't know these, but these were all big movies. Fever Play, Garden of Weeds, The Navigator. The Navigator was with Buster Keaton. Seahawk, 16th century. In that film, and I'd love to find it, Mr. Rigney played a merchant. He had purchased the island just five years before, but he, in that film, made a, a, a bit part. He played a merchant, so we have a movie of Mr. Wrigley in 1924. Wow. Of course, that's their home up on the hillside. What's the, what is the name of this movie again? Uh, it's called 16th Century. So see if you can find it. That would be great. And then Woman, well, Women Who Live. Now, the song that everybody was singing at that time was a song called Avalon, written by Al Joseph in 1920. Now, the post office at that time is over where Blue Water Avalon is. Okay, that's where our post office was. They didn't move the post office until the arcade, the post office arcade, until 1927. Now, I mentioned that the SS Catalina, which is called the Great White Cruise Ship, um, came into service in 1924. The Cabrillo came in in 1903 and the Avalon in 1921. So these were the three main sources of, uh, of transportation we had then. So uh, the dancing was at the pavilion. They have the hotel called the Pavilion Hotel. The reason they call it that is that was a dance pavilion. And people would go there to dance uh, until they built the casino in 1929. Then everybody went over to the casino. The casino wasn't even started yet. So they did have the Sugarloaf Casino. Now, if you've been up to the Bird Park, I don't know if you've gone up the canyon toward the Wrigley Memorial, if you look on your right, you'll see a frame, and that's where play is, uh, where they have the, the young kids. It's standing. a local preschool. Yeah, the, the local preschool. That frame is the frame of the, and I think Paul, when we get done with this, they'll bring out a book and you can see uh, the, what I'm talking about. So that frame was moved from there when they started building the present casino. They took it up the canyon uh, and they turned it into, at that time it was the largest bird cage in the world. And then eventually when they took the birds out, they kept the frame there and that's where the preschool is. So what did, okay, here, I find this very interesting. Uh, I, at least I do. Um, what was housing like? in 1924. <clears throat> when Mr. Wrigley took over uh, in 1919, that's when he purchased, uh, they, they always say it wrong, they said he purchased the island. He never, they don't purchase the island, they purchase the controlling stock of the Santa Catalina Island Company, which is really the term of it, which was started by the Bannings in 1894. So they don't buy the island, they just have control of the island through the stocks that they own. Okay, now when he came over, uh, I, I really wish that I had known him because he was such a, a wonderful person. And everybody that are still alive that remember we called him Mr. Wrigley because of the respect for him. So this is what he decided to do. Number one, at that time we had what we called Tent City and almost all the homes were tents. They were only temporary places. So he got rid of the tents and he put on permanent homes. 
In fact, my grandfather came over here in 1920 and 21 to build all the homes on the Scanso. So the first thing he wanted was to have people have permanent homes because he knew how much how important it would be to them to have their own home. Number two, he wanted them to own the property. At that time, everybody was renting from the Bannings. He wanted them to buy the property. Uh, he wanted them to paint the homes in bright colors, and he wanted them to give them names. So if you go up, especially Clarissa, which is the one way over there, go up and down the street, or the golf cart or whatever, you're going to see a lot of, of names, like the, the blue the bluebird or their they have the matchbook he wanted them to give them names which i thought was kind of interesting so what did homes cost in these days well when grandpa built the homes on the scanso believe it or not i know this is going to be an astounding number fifteen hundred dollars to own a home on the Scanso, which is pretty much the way it was for all of the ones they had. Okay, so um, where was the bank? If you go to the end of uh, Clarissa, it used to be C.C. Gallagher's. I don't know what they call it now. It's a pottery shop. That was the Pacific Southwest Trust and Savings. Up until Mr. Wrigley took over the island, what you would do is make your deposit with a representative from the mainland here, then when he went to the mainland, he would take your money and put it in a bank. We didn't have a bank over here. It was always over there. Okay, now, so uh, where they would have dancing would be the Sugarloaf Casino and the, and the pavilion. Um, the hospital, as I said, was here. Uh, the hotels you would stay at would be the St. Catherine Hotel, which used to be down at the Scanso Beach Club, which is what they have now, but that used to be a beautiful hotel. The Glenmore Hotel, which is still here on Sumner, was around since 1891. The Atwater Hotel, which is still here, was built in 1920 to be named after the uh, wife of their son. They had a son, Philip Knight Wrigley. He married a woman by the name of Helen Atwater. Mm -hmm. So they named the whole building after her, which is why they call it the Atwater Hotel. Mm -hmm. People think it's because of the location. It's because her maiden name was mm -hmm. Atwater. Oh, wow. You got your and then they had the Wait, Island Villas. Now, the Island know. Villas, they had over 2,000 <laughs> of these oh, little shafts over where the tour plaza is now, where the miniature golf course and all of that was. It was called the largest single hotel in the world because they had over 2,000 of these little shacks. Now, if you want to know what they look like, go over toward the restrooms and you'll see a craft, a building for crafts. You know, it's Catalina Crafts. That is one of the original uh, island villa uh, that's where everybody that's wants to say. Is now, that true? Days, that's true. Over for wow. a whole big $21 for a weekend, you could come over on the Great White Steamship, stay in the Island Villas for three days, and that would include going and dancing in the theater. $21. Boy, I'm you know, uh, the entertainment was the Band Box Theater, which is where they used to have a place, but they took the sign down, was the um, uh, Avalon Spa. That used to be the Allen Cano, but before that, it was the Band Box uh, Theater. The Chicago Cubs were already coming here. The Chicago Cubs up by the golf course, which is now called the Field of Dreams, that is where the Chicago Cubs had their spring training from 1921 to 1951. Mr. Wrigley owned the Cubs and brought them over uh, every February and March. So that's what you do for, and then they had the Greek Amphitheater. At the end of the street of Crescent, you'll see the park. You'll see a, a machine gun. If you look a little further, you'll see a whole bunch of, of, of uh, concrete benches. 
that is where the people used to sit, and they had uh, over 600 seats there to look at the uh, the concerts. They would do free concerts for the people, which you know it was great. I just think they should do that space again. I just think they should use that space again. I mean, it's, that just seems magic to me. So what they would have are, what tours you would have then would be the Emperor and the Empress, which was uh, the giant uh, paddle wheel boats uh, that eventually they got to Phoenix. At that time it was that. They had trips to the Isthmus. You have one minute. One minute left on oh, my tape. Okay. Uh, They'll keep going, but okay, just on the, the tape the, one minute. The bas- okay. The bathhouse was uh, where the basketball and uh, volleyball courts are. I did. The country club, the golf, is at the same location, but not the same golf course. Uh, the the, the uh, recreation they had, you could play golf. They had, uh, you could uh, purchase or you could oh, rent yeah, horses uh, over where the um, Naughty Fox is now. That's where you could rent horses uh, in those days. Uh, the library, believe it or not, was on Metropole at the Sophia Yacht Club, which is uh, part of the Hermosa Hotel with that big circle that looks like a, 